Welcome to this video tutorial on the topic of Prime Print Solution. In this video, we will demonstrate the workflow in order to create a splint. We will guide you through the Serix software and the InLab Splint app to the InLab CAM software. We are in the administration phase, and we will first select the indication Splint. Next, we tap the appropriate jaw. Now, at the bottom of the screen, the little arrow to the right with Next is displayed. Since our focus is on the workflow, you will see the image catalogs that have already been scanned. To create a splint, three image catalogs are scanned. Next, we move on to the next phase, the model phase. This phase displays the Start Design App button, which we will tap. The corresponding app opens automatically, and the case is already open. First, we tap the Dense Spline Serona icon in the upper left corner and save the case. In the Splint app, there are three phases. We start in the Prepare phase with the Prepare Model step. In this step, material can be added, removed, or smoothed with the Form tool. Next, we switch to the Define Insertion Access step. The Insertion Access tool allows you to set the access for blocking out the jaw. The undercut depth is visualized using a direct color gradient, from light green for a low depth to dark red for a great depth. The Insertion Access itself is displayed with the yellow arrow above the center of the jaw. To adjust the axis, you can move the arrow with the left mouse button or via the disc and the orange colored ball. When designing splints, you use the parameter undercut clearance to specify how deep the edge of the splint should be in the undercut. We move on to the check blockout step. Here, the blocking can be checked. This was done using the setting in the insertion axis. For a splint, the interdental spaces are blocked out up to around 2 mm. The wax can be modified with the form tool. You can add, remove, and smooth wax. The max wax thickness parameter can be adjusted to determine the amount of wax to be applied. We switch to the reline tool. This tool makes it possible to cover a marked area with blockout material. To get to the next phase, we tap the little arrow to the right at the bottom of the screen. The Design phase contains three tools available which we are going to demonstrate next. First, we enable the Create Splint option. Here, the splint contour can be set by drawing a line or it can be adjusted with a plane that is displayed with the Create by Plane option. We disable the lower jaw and first move the plane using the yellow arrow. With the disc, the plane can be tilted. To finish, we confirm the position by tapping Apply. At this point, different tools and options are available. To optimize the line, the currently enabled Edit Line tool can be used or the Drag Line option above it can be selected. Additionally, we checked the Create Round Transition option so that the edges will be rounded. By enabling Plane Occlusion, a flat and plane occlusion will be created. To initiate the final splint calculation, we confirm again by tapping Apply. At this point, we perform a manual correction palatinally, and the result you will see next. The line correction is similar to the definition of a preparation margin. It is begun with a double click on the line. More single clicks can be set, and it is finished with another double click on the line. Once you tap on the user interface outside the splint with the left mouse button, the splint is displayed in yellow.
By enabling the second tool, Open Jaw, the lower jaw is automatically displayed and the bite opening can be adjusted with the slider. The last tool, Add Tooth Guide, provides the option to create a canine guidance. For this purpose, there are two parameters with which the height and diameter are determined. In our case, we proceed with the last phase, Finalize. Here, there are also several options available. We will focus on the Articulator Grinding and Text Label tool. A list of articulation values which can be used opens up. We select the Medium Articulation and confirm with Apply. Finally, we put some text on the splint so that this can be matched to a patient, for example. With a click of the left mouse button, the text is placed. Before exporting the splint, we use the Analyzing Tools to check whether the design meets the minimum and maximum wall thickness. To do this, we select this option from the Page Palette. At the upper edge of the screen, a color scale is located which indicates allocation and evaluation. Areas displayed in green are accepted, indicating they completely meet the material parameters. Areas displayed in blue are too thin and could easily break. Areas marked in orange or red are too thick, and the print material is possibly not light cured properly during the print process, leaving liquid print resin on the restoration and potentially posing a health risk. The Analyzing Tools point out certain risks at an early time, when they can still be corrected in the design stage. In our case, we proceed with the data export. When the in-lab CAM software is opened, all cases previously transmitted are displayed. We select our splint and can either select the so-called fast track by tapping the double arrow or we can switch to the next phase, the arrange phase. Fast track will take you directly to the last phase, produce. In this case, the in-lab CAM software automatically positions and orients the print object on the build plate and also defines the support structure automatically. Detailed information about the in-lab CAM software can be found in a different video tutorial. We click the double arrow and can finally modify the detail level in the window under Production Options and analyze the print object with the Analyzing Tools. To start printing, we tap the green area labeled Start Production. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to wish you every success when working with Prime Print Solution.